Max, Max, what's the turn out of my lifestyle? Smoking green, blowing white clouds to build the blue skies Conversating with the gods by my wildflower huh? To let them know that it's the gods I would This love's the never ending saga Gods by my wildflower huh? To let them know that it's the gods I would Word. This love's the never ending saga Gods by my wildflower huh? To let them know that it's the gods I would Word. This love's the never ending saga Gods by my wildflower huh? To let them know that it's the gods I would Word. This love's the never ending saga Walk through the sands of times like Gara On the other side Side of that gad is karma, you wet prada, the devil like inside your box now while the angels fly over my head stone. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. We are back with another episode of the God's Hour Podcast with your boy Big 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 Serbs in this motherfucking place to be. How's everybody doing? Hope. Y'all are doing great, amazing, fantastic, magnanimous, blessings, offers, and universal positivity across all the lands that inhabit the God's Hour listeners. I want to start this off by saying rest in peace to Tracy Braxton and Razor Ramon, a.k.a. Scott Hall, Formerly of the Braxton show, you know, obviously with Tony Braxton, all the Braxtons and WWE, you know, uh, Hall and Nash. That was a great EP by Westside Gun and Conway. He was a great wrestler. Apparently, that's why Westside Gun says, hey, yo, before every song. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't I don't know any backing evidence. I haven't seen. I'm not I'm not that big of a Razor Ramon fan. He was before my times. When I was watching wrestling, it was all about Rey Mysterio, Batista. John Cena was cool, but John Cena was the fan favorite. Fan favorite. I hated Edge. So Edge was cool. I like the uh, Bobby Lashley was cool. He had the the Terminator, the fucking conductor, whatever that move was, the Dominator, the Dominatrix. He had a crazy move. So rest in peace, formally. And we're gonna talk about some serious shit, man. I I, I had I had some real real serious shit to cover because. And I wasn't even going to say, I wasn't even going to say all this shit that I'm going to talk about now. But literally about an hour ago, I was at the store. I ran into the homie Edgar. I hadn't seen Edgar in a long, long time. So it was cool saying what's up to him, catching up with him, seeing how he was doing. He seems to be doing all right. You know, he's working at the store and shit. And I don't know if he has like benefits and stuff, but I told him uh, he could get a job where I'm working at and, you know, they could pull his application for referral, but, you know, he, uh, me and Edgar, we're, we're, uh, real cool with, uh, obviously one of my best friends, Raul. I don't know if I've talked about Raul on the podcast, but let's just say I haven't, right? So Raul was one of my, my best friends I grew up with. Uh, I didn't call up with him, but he was like one of my best friends for a time. And anybody who really affects me in a deep way where we could just talk shit, we could talk about the world and what's wrong with just shit. And we could just talk about anything in general, like with no judgment, no nothing like that. I think that's really cool, you know, and I, 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 meet, I meet very few People that affect me in that way. Uh, I met Raul when we were like, when we were freshmen. He was like a real kind of like church boy. Like his his mama, I guess, brainwashed him into that Catholic shit. And he was all about God, no drugs. And then like somewhere around our sophomore year, he 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 did like shrooms and he was smoking weed every day and shit. And he uh, we got real cool. Around that time, because when I first met him, I was like, who, who is this fucking little, little white Mexican kid over here and shit? 
and he got cool with, with, with some of the homies and and I would call us the burrito boys because every time we fucking had a, a food fair at school, I would always get a, a a burrito from Miguel. Is it Miguel Juniors or uh, Miguel's or whatever? They got they had some pretty bomb bean and cheese burritos that when when you're hungry as fuck, all you have to eat is like school lunch and shit. That Miguel's Juniors fat ass burrito was probably like thirty points on Weight Watchers. That shit was smacking, bro. We would always get burritos. Like I don't know how the fuck. I remember one day we just all got burritos. Like I don't even think I paid for one, but we just ended up all having burritos. And there was a cool photo that I think I still have of uh, me and all the homies with the burrito in our hands, like fucking just real, real cool. Just a real cool photo, man. Like I, I think that's kind of what's missing in the world: people not living in the moment, or people just live too much in the moment. And they're not thinking about the future. But, like, when do people have fun anymore? Like, I think people with social media now, people are just wanting to look like they're having fun. But it doesn't look like people are having fun, man. Like, that was when I was always taking pictures and videos. And I was just having a good old time. Enjoying my high school years as much as I could. Raul graduated early. Like, I think uh, junior year. He fucking paid for some tests. I think he paid for like $200 for some tests to graduate early, which is super crazy. Like, I don't know. All he had to do was wait like, I don't know, two years so he could uh, graduate. I don't know why you would do that. You're literally spending $200 to do some shit that they just give you, right? And then I, I heard like uh, he told me, I think he told me he was getting paid $18 working somewhere. It was just like pressing a button like a... Uh, I don't know what the fuck he was doing, but he was doing some sort of manufacturing thing or something like that, where all he had to do was press a button, like some sort of metal shit. I don't. I have no idea. This was like years and years ago. In my uh, in the beginning of my senior year, I remember I was walking. Did I walk? I want to say I walked home from school, and no, none, nobody was at my house yet. I started seeing on Twitter that uh I don't know what happened but I had I had homies that that were out that would just be out and about and shit so literally the news was way too slow because the homies already knew like what what had happened somebody tweeted you know Raul died rest in peace and I'm like what the fuck like what is that like like what do you mean like Raul died so I called up the homie the other homie. And I'm like, what happened? And and fucking apparently Raul robbed the jack in the box, gave the money away, and was pointing a gun. I guess it, it, it probably most likely was his dad's revolver at cars and shit. And he was like screaming, I got a gun and shit. And the cops ended up uh, shooting him like a bunch of times. They drove him to the hospital, and he he did it. He wasn't dead at that point, but he passed on the operating table. Edgar, the homie at the store, knew him, and I hadn't seen him in a while. So that shit had just got me like really emotional. Just kind of like I felt, I really felt like Raúl, like kind of like I don't know, brought us together in that moment. So I'm not the type of person like if we were cool, I don't know for for whatever reason, like our lives just kind of like diverged at some point i'm not gonna have harsh feelings like i don't feel like unless you do some fuck shit to me like i'm not really gonna be the person to be like oh fuck this fool or like oh this fool thinks he's all whatever like nah man it's just like life you know life takes you to different roads and shit like that and you can't get mad at that it's just the way that life goes so i'm already all emotional fucking seeing Edgar again because he just reminded me of Raul and I told him you know he could uh, I, I could he could refer me and fucking they'll pull his application and shit like that and hopefully I get a bonus I was looking at the screens and shit at my work and uh they said we get like a $200 bonus for the people referred hopefully that's true hopefully I, I'm not as blind as I think I am and fucking now it's the shit because I need them $200 bro $200 could go to a new amp could go to a lot of shit, bruh. But as I'm going to pay for my food, these fucking, this couple 
with their cart full of shit goes in the express lane. The express lane in California, if no one knows, if, if anyone's been under a rack, is 15 items or less. All I was paying for was some dog food, shampoo, uh, shaving cream, butter, and like two toothbrushes. It's five things, bruh. And I tell them, yo, uh, this line is for 15 items or less. And they just look at me like, okay. I'm like, right there, that's about 17, 18 items, yo. This fucking bitch is like, oh, well, she's not saying anything. And I'm like, I don't know what I said, but the fucking dude, he gave me like a thumbs up. Like, oh, okay, that's cool. So I'm like, oh, well, that's very, oh, I said, oh, that's very kind. And he gave me like a thumbs up. So... Fucking, this is like what pisses me off. Like when I get mad, I get really fucking quiet. Like if you hear me yelling and shit like this, that's because I was quiet at one point and I'm just yelling right now because I didn't get the chance to snap on you. Honestly, I really wish I would get like this in front of people so they could see that I'm really not fucking around. Like my whole energy wasn't like I was really quiet and they could tell like I was really getting upset. So I just let them fucking go through with their bullshit. And as soon as they left, I tell the lady, I got her name. Her name is Estella, the fucking chick who's over here supposed to be monitoring the people who bring their fucking food to get scanned at the line. So Estella from fucking Stater Brothers, you did a horrible fucking job today. I hope your ass gets fired for that bullshit because there's customers over here like me that fucking only buy five things but yeah you scanning like 20 items from some bitch ass motherfuckers that could give less about other people i'm like yo uh like why didn't you say nothing and they're like she tell me oh some bullshit like oh well you know the manager it's her job to be it's like fuck the manager that ain't her job bitch you're over here scanning the fucking food so fucking, it's the manager's job. What the fuck are you doing over here fucking regulating the line? You're not doing shit. Like, this shit really pissed me off, Presley. Like, I'm over here, like, just trying to go about my day. I really didn't fucking feel like running into Edgar and being all emotional. And then I got these fucking dickheads over here, selfish as fuck, they bought two fucking foster beers because it's two for four or five or whatever the fuck, broke ass niggas were buying hot dogs and shit, and yo, check this out, I ain't got nothing to get hot dogs or fosters, but fuck beer, I don't mean to rain on anybody's hot dog barbecue, but you gotta be fucking shitting me with this shit nowadays, people have no fucking respect, zero fucking respeto over here, and it, and it pisses me off because... I don't know what world I'm, I feel like I'm living in the fucking twilight zone. Like, I don't, I get that, that Putin invaded Russia. I, I understand the gas is 850 a fucking thing. And I, and I get that, that your, your, your boyfriend got a little dick. And fucking, you just want to make micheladas out of Australian beer and all this good shit. But when it says 15 items or less, you need to get the fuck out of this line. And respect the people who come here every day. Not fucking because you buy Hot Pockets and Tostito Rolls. You want to drink beer like a fat fucking broke slob that you is with your little dick having boyfriend. I don't give a fuck about that. And y'all dudes out here that let your girl slide and, 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 all, and all this shit, you could get knocked the fuck out too. I was really ready to fight. I was really ready to for this dude to say something to me and be like, okay, well, when we go outside, let me knock you the fuck out real quick so you can fucking get a nice snooze and fucking I could just go about my day. Because this shit, I, I, I feel like I'm way too nice. I feel like I let people slide with their bullshit. Because I have this thing where I want to give people the benefit of the doubt with their bullshit, their arrogance, their ignorance. They're just obnoxious demeanor in this world. But I got to stop, man. I got to stop being nice. I got to just start being like, well, yo, 
Fuck you, because this is some bullshit. And I know some of y'all listening, like, well, yo, sir, you tripping over a fucking line and shit? Nah, my nigga, there's fucking lines here for a reason. If I fucking buy a Disneyland Express Pass, and you did it, and you win this line, I'm gonna fucking get mad and be like, yo, I paid $200 for the pass. You need a pass to fuck away from me right now before you get hit with a right hook, my nigga. Because this is enough. Enough with the bullshit. And Presley's over here like, what's going on? Why are you yelling? And Presley, I'm really mad right now because people got no respect nowadays. People have no zero fucking integrity, morals, all that shit is shot now, my nigga. So, and it's just like, it's just like what the letter I said right here in this, in this letter that I read to the world. Probably by a, a, a well-known, established, respected Baba Lau or, or uh, Kimbisa uh, priest. Or, or I, I don't know. I, I don't know how it goes down in certain uh, co- uh, covens and religions. Twenty. The twenty twenties is the height of instant gratification. Everybody's just moving too fast, and they're not realizing what they're doing. I understand that there's two people full of shit with lines. But guess what? I'm not a nigga with, with shit in my car filled to the brim. I got like five things. I got shit to do, a podcast to record. I got to get ready for work. There's a lot of shit I need to do. And if you got a lot of shit to do, maybe you should come in the morning when there's no one there or at night in the fucking AM when there's no one there. But if you fucking just want to act like I'm not going to say nothing because you don't want me to ruin your vibe, your little bubble, bubble, whatever, fuck you and your bubble. I'm going to pop it. I'm going to say something. And to that bitch, Estella, at the Stater Brothers who said it was the manager's job, fuck you and fuck the manager. I'm going to say something. And if you motherfuckers were talking about I'm a Karen, fuck y'all too because this is some bullshit. The way the world is spinning right now is spinning fucking backwards. I feel like I'm fucking spinning backwards in this motherfucking world. So, (laughs) I'm going to just chill the fuck out right now because that shit is hilarious, bro. That shit, honestly, I could not believe what I had to fucking go through like an hour ago. But I got it out. I got all my frustrations out and I'm actually laughing about it right now. But that, that's all it is for me, man. Rude motherfuckers, man. Fuck y'all. Like like this uh, like this dude, Sue Surf, man. He's over here wearing a sombrero and a poncho and playing uh, La Bamba and shit like that at the Cortez face-off. Like, why, why are black people, and I'm not trying to be racist, but why are my black brothers and sisters, or my black brothers more specifically in this point, so apt to be racist to our brown brothers and sisters. If Cortez showed up with blackface and a watermelon, how funny would that have been? It wouldn't be, right? It would be the biggest uh, fucking tragedy since Martin Luther King's assassination. They talking about this why we hate Mexicans because they're always racist, like white people and all this shit. But when Sue Surf comes up here looking like fucking Speedy Gonzalez playing that bullshit... It really upsets me, and I, I'm really, I'm more upset at the fact that no one's saying shit. Jay Black's laughing, everyone's laughing, ha ha ha, so, and Cortez didn't say shit neither. So it's like, Cortez, what the fuck are you doing? I understand this is battle rap, and we get uh, disrespectful and shit, but where do we draw the line? Like, we could talk about it in the battle, but leading up to the face-off, where the face-off really got nothing to do with the battle... I'm kind of offended. I'm really offended. I didn't like Sue Surf really before this because I think Sue Surf is a fuck boy. But this is that clown nigga shit I was speaking about a few podcast episodes ago. So I don't fuck with Sue Surf at all. I feel like, you know, he thinks he's all bad because fucking he got bodied by Loaded Lux with a fucking box of Apple Jacks. He choked a hundred times and then he beat John John. And twerk, and now he he's on this high, his fucking lame ass high horse. Like if he's the best battle rapper on earth, uh, fucking surf, you got bodied by Geechee, bro. I want a rematch with Geechee. I need somebody to come and take Surf's head off and humble him for me. Don Marino, where you at, bro? I'd battle Surf myself, but I'm not in the game. 
I don't want to be in the game if this is what it is where fools just get to be racist and no one says anything. Like, that's some funny shit. Like, it's not funny, bro. It's not. Like, I don't, I don't understand this shit. Like, if we want equality, let's talk about equality. But when this this racism shit is, is funny until we make fun of you. So we should just stop with this bullshit. This is uh, that clown nigga shit I was talking about. And I, I just think it's unacceptable, bro. Sue Surf is fucking lame. He takes a super duper L, L of the week, uh, super L man and shit like that. Uh, let's, let's get DNA over here to battle surf and get him the, all the way the fuck out of here, bro. Cause that, that shit is lame. I don't, I, I, I really don't have much to say besides that surf is a cornball and he's racist as fuck. And I don't know why, you know, uh, it start. I think it started with Tay Rock, Tay Rock calling Cortez a bean eater that he was Mexican and all that. And fucking Cortez is Puerto Rican. Like that's another thing. Like. I get that we could be like just dumb as fuck, but when you're ignorant, when you're a stupid ignorant nigga like that, it's just like, I don't understand it. I really don't understand this shit. This is why I'm not really big on the battle rap culture. Battle rap is its own culture that is like cool at times, but acceptable to do certain things. Like you're, you're held at a high standard just because you could talk good shit. But then when... Other people talk shit about you like it's wrong or they take it like somewhere else. So I, I think, I think, I don't know, man. That wasn't cool. I don't know how I feel about uh, this battle rap shit now that Surf uh, did that shit. Like, I really, like, the, the battle rap has left a, 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 a kind of sour taste in my taste buds for that. But fuck Surf more specifically. I don't think he's dope. The subtitle shit is lame. Um, I think... Surf really only wins when his fucking, his battlers are unprepared. And that's really all it is, bro. Because he battled Geechee, got bodied. He battled Lux and got bodied. He got bodied a bunch of times, bro, where he was unprepared or he had lame shit. And that's all it really comes down to, bro. It don't, like, all this fuck shit about fucking uh, sombreros and racist shit and, and you're the best shit talking. And it got to gotta do nothing with battle raps, bro. It really doesn't. It has nothing to do with rap. And has nothing to do with battling. So let's just stop the clown nigga shit uh, ASAP. You know, PSA from your boy Big Surf before I do some brujeria shit. And some of you motherfuckers pay the price. You pay the consequences for your actions, bruh. Because you think some people let it slide, but other people are not going to let it slide, bruh. Because you're really offending me and my peoples, my culture. And I'm not going to stand for it. And I'm just going to leave it at... That. And I'm going to try to get some of this other serious shit out of the way. David Portnoy is a maniac. Why is he a maniac? Because he was accused. Now, he's just accused. But this is why I think this is real. He's doing like a counter lawsuit. When you do a counter lawsuit, you're not really giving a fuck about winning publicly or something like that. You're really more worried about winning in court. So the way I feel about niggas suing in court over shit like this is I feel like you're just 100% guilty. So David Portnoy, he's uh, accused of sexual assault or something like that. And he's just a freaky nigga, a freaky fucking lovely bones nigga. And um, I don't know, man. He was really cool. I, I really enjoyed his pizza reviews. And he thinks he's all bad because he's a millionaire and all that good shit. And I could really, if there was someone else, I'd watch somebody else to do the reviews and shit like that, like heavily. But I'm I, I'm saying fuck Dave Portnoy too. He's a fucking maniac. Get him the fuck out of here, like DNA said. Let's see what else. On some serious shit, Amber Ali and K Capri were attacked at the uh, 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 Jocelyn's Cabernet reunion by Jocelyn and her boyfriend Ballistic Beats. And all I can say is, wow, bruh. Like as a man. You have no balls for attacking uh, women. Like, I don't know where you where you clown niggas get your stripes from, but, but putting your hands on a woman literally gets you shanked in prison. I don't know where these fools think that they, they fucking, they earn their fucking, uh, their headbands from touching, putting their hands on a female, but I'll beat you the fuck up. I'll beat a woman beater the fuck up. Like, if a woman comes to me and says, so-and-so put hands on me. I'm liable to stomp. I'm liable to beat you. I'm, 
I don't even want to say it, bro. I really want to uh, just really uh, like just send my like sincerest blessings and energy to Amber Ali and and I don't know if Kay Capri was uh, was attacked. I don't know the whole situation, right? I just know that Amber Ali was she was crying on Instagram Live and it looked really sad to me. It just looked really bad, bro. And I heard Jocelyn's on dope and shit like that. And she's like just the alcoholic or whatever. So I used to think Jocelyn was like really fine and shit like that. And bro, and like, I don't know, man, this, this kind of like the shit that's going on in the world is really making me see like what these people really are, like who they are behind the scenes and shit. And not even behind the scenes, like this happened on television, bro. Jocelyn, Jocelyn and Ballistic Beats. Or whatever the fuck they call you, whatever whatever his name is. Uh, I hope y'all can fight good because in prison you're gonna need to throw your dukes up. I know Jocelyn's gonna get bitch slapped, and ballistics uh, they're gonna go ballistic in his ass too. Pause, because uh, that's not right, bro. That's that's just some shit that you don't do. Like that's some shit your mama should have been taught you. Like you don't put your hands on a woman, and Jocelyn. You know, she's wilding out, bro. Like, I don't understand where this shit comes from. But this shit is crazy, bro. I didn't think this podcast was going to be this heavy, but here we here we are, bro. Here we the fuck are. So, peace and blessings to Amber Ali. I hope she's okay. I hope everything's all right. I hope everything uh, works out with them and their situation because that shit is crazy. And speaking of people that want to fucking get wilding and shit, Elon Musk wants to cha challenge his Putin to combat? Elon Musk tweeted, Sing let's do single combat with Putin. Putin is like, who the fuck is this fucking moron? Like, bro, I'm, I'm the president of fucking communist corporations of Russia. Elon Musk, he's going to throw a punch and get sniped, bro. And his fucking Tesla company is going to be absorbed by Russians and shit. And that's how Russia is going to take over America. I don't know what Elon Musk is doing. I don't know why he thinks this is like some gangster shit. That he's doing, like, I don't know, I, I think Elon Musk, I think he watched Menace to Society before he tweeted that or something, or he was watching the UFC or something before he did this. I don't understand what the fuck his, his, his whole deal is, but you can always count on Elon to do some fucking, like, fake gangster shit, like, if, you know, all his money makes him, like, a fucking thug or something like that. Money makes you more of a bitch, I feel like, if anything, you know what I mean? Anis Osman, this 19-year-old, buys her husband a $650,000 Huracan, Huracan Evo Lambo uh, for the baby, though, to take care of them. Does money buy happiness? Maybe. But I feel like, as women, women are in this position to rule the world and they're ruling the world now and I think women rule the world as of today and 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 women they drink and drive now and and women can just uh have a lot more power that they always wish they had but when they have more power they do shit like this where they just buy their husband's Lambos like as a 19 year old you could have put that money in an investment bottom that Lambo and kept that money and invested it again and, and just made more money. Like, I don't understand what women are doing. This is the letter I shit I was talking about, bro, where these women are just fucking, are just wilding out, bro. Like, I don't understand what it the fuck is with these, these women just thinking that fucking men will uh, take care of everything just because they got the car. And, and it was craziest men are that fucking dumb? Or they, they'll, they'll be, they'll have a Lambo and be like, oh, I gotta take care of everything, a baby. And then. It's like, what the fuck? Like, so I guess love is a two way street. Money does, I guess, pave the road. So I don't know. I just thought that was really interesting to me. Um, what else do we got? Conway didn't read the Griselda contract. He said it wasn't in my favor. And that's pretty crazy to me, bro, because I'm the type of person where it's like, I don't care how, but he's an Aquarius. So I, I get, I get that. If he's an Aquarius, then his whole thing is like, he's not really going to worry about it. But me, I'm a Capricorn. I want to know what the fuck's going on with my money. I want to know what's going on. If there's a contract that I got to sign, 
Oh, I'm reading that motherfucker for sure. I'm reading it. I'm going to get someone else to read it. I'm going to get someone else to read it too. Because people think, people think, oh, I could just read it and they'll tell you everything. No, they use like real technical terms and shit. Like fucking you are obligated to do this involuntary. They use words like uh, oblige and, and voluntary and and they don't say have to like you have to do this and you get this. It's like no, they they use real technical industry terms and and lawyer terms that you need. That's why motherfuckers hire lawyers, bro, because they really want to figure out what it is exactly in the contract. And that's what lawyers get paid to do. Lawyers read contracts all the time, and that's their job. That's why they get hired. To tell people, yo, you get this and you have to do this and then this is what happens. So if Conway didn't sign it, sign it and he said, he said it wasn't in his favor, that obviously means he had a lawyer look it over and tell him exactly what it was that he was entitled to. And I feel like Conway got entitled to shit, which is on West Side Gun. And which and 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 honestly, this makes sense now that he's saying this after he said that this music shit ain't what it cracked up to be for him and shit like that. Like it makes totally sense because I could I could totally understand him thinking that you know, Wes had like the best uh, intentions for him or, or had the best. He was looking out for him, but obviously in the contract, it, it, he really wasn't looking out for him. So that's pretty sad. I would I would hope I would never uh, I'll never say I'll never do shit. But I'm just saying, I, I hope I would never do that to any of my family. Like, especially, like, I don't know what it is, bro. Like, I don't, I can't honestly say what, I can't speak for West Side Gun, but all I can say is, is like, that's really on him. And Wes is a grown ass fucking man. And that's his fam. So that's their shit they got to deal with. All I'm saying is, I don't think I would do that, but I don't know the whole situation. So I can't talk that much shit. I just, I just want to say that I hope everything is all right with Griselda and I hope that everything is cool with them. This Texas Ranger is sentenced to 38 years on smuggling charges. Uh, he was smuggling drugs, immigrants, and cartel members through his ranch and he was working with uh, the cartel uh, probably up in the north in Mexico. But this shit made me just think, like, Ozark is real, bro. Like, this shit is not for games over here. Like, honestly, you think this is some crazy shit, but this probably is going on uh, more often than you than you would probably think, bro. The cartel is like a fucking, is like cancer, bro. And I'm not trying to say the cartel is negative in any way. I'm just saying the cartel is like AIDS, bro. They're everywhere, bro. They spread like fucking Nutella on toast, B. You know, they should make a story around that instead of like Ozark where this shit is like 90% fucking fake, 5% fucking gay, and 5% fucking fantasy. You know what I mean? Like, if you've seen Ozark, like, I commented on YouTube, like, this shit is not real, bro. Like, this shit would never, like, a, a fucking white bitch would never be in contact with a cartel leader, let alone talk to them the way that they've been talking to them and shit. And people were like, well, how do you know? Like, you don't know this shit. It's like, like, bitch, because I've actually been in Mexico and I actually know how fucking things work, at least from a fucking fly on the wall. If I'm a fly on the wall and I'm seeing how this shit goes down, Ozark is a fucking fantasy. Now, fucking, how do you, how do you think it really is for the fucking crooked cops or fucking the actual people that are in the cartel there. They'll probably look at this shit and be like, yeah, this is a Disney fantasy of a Disney remake of some shit that's fake as fuck. You know what I mean? But it's just funny that, you know, I was just watching this shit on the news or whatever. This Texas rancher since 38 years. He's going to have a lot of fun. He's going to have a good old time with the homies over there in prison. Because once you're in a cartel, you're in a cartel for life. So he's probably going to get snuck in Subway sandwiches. And, you know, he's going to fucking uh, be singing Guadalajara, Guadalajara, Guadalajara. You know what I mean? So good for him, bro. Have fun doing your time. I'm making these new cookies, man. I'm going to be selling these baked goods. I want to, but nobody's buying shit because everything is like up and up and shit. So I'm really going to have to figure out what I'm going to do, bro. I, I, I made these M&M cookies fire. Macadamia nut cookies fire. Fucking uh, 
Butterscotch cookies a little too sweet, bro. Like if you like your, if you got a sweet tooth, and you want some ice cream with these shits, these would probably be the ones, bro. I didn't know butterscotch was that fucking uh that sweet, bro. Like I tasted this shit, I said, God damn, bro, what the fuck? Uh, it's way too sweet, bro. This is the last time I'm making these shits. Unless there's a high demand, I'll make them. I have no problem making them, but god damn, bro. This shit is sweet as a bitch. I thought the C's Candies Butterscotch... I was thinking I had uh, uh, C's Butterscotch Lollipops in my mind when I was making them. And I had it, and I'm like, this straight up tastes like a cotton candy cookie, bro. Like caramel cotton candy, bro. Fucking unbelievable, bro. So I watched the Batman... Yesterday with my pops, fucking incredible movie. I haven't seen a movie that good in a long time. That's probably the best Batman movie. It might be the best Batman movie to date, but I'll say it's the best movie in the past five years, maybe ten years. In in the in the era where all these fucking lame ass superhero movies are out and it's just the same cookie cutter shit, this was very refreshing. It's a dark fucking movie, like, like literally and like theme wise, like it's, there's barely any light. It's like, I just really liked how they shot it. I didn't think, and it's a crazy, this is crazy because I remember hearing about Robert Pattinson being uh, casted as the Batman like years ago, like 2014 or 15. I'm like, ah, oh, man, I don't know. I remember, it's crazy because they, they said when they announced Ben Affleck as a Batman, I'm like, okay, so are they doing it with Affleck or Pattinson? But it turns out they did the Batman vs. Superman with Ben Affleck, and I kind of didn't really like his Batman, and I really dug Pattinson's version of the Batman, which is crazy because before I'm like, Affleck is going to smoke that shit. He was the daredevil. He got this shit. He's got the look. He's got the fucking paws. He got the chin for it. And he just got the whole rundown of what I would think he could do. That Batman was kind of was kind of ass, bro. Uh, it wasn't ass all the way. It was it was like I would say the best Batman to date has to be either Christian Bale tied with Pattinson. Then I would say Affleck, and then it, and it go, then Clooney, and then no, 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 Michael Keaton, then Clooney, and then it drops from there, and then uh, what's his name, Woods, whatever, or Adam West it was his name, I, I guess. I said Woods. That's fucking Call of Duty. But Zoe Kravitz killed it. She's fucking sexy and as hell. She looked fly. Awesome performance. They had uh, the homie, I forgot his name, but he played Commissioner Gordon. We finally got a black Commissioner Gordon in the Batman series. Who? That's what I'm talking about. We had the Penguin in there. We had Falcone in there. It just really, really different. We had the Riddler. This was the best Riddler. I mean, this is one of the best Batman movies of all time. Really dope, really dope movie. It was almost three hours, and I didn't get up not one time to take a piss because I didn't want to miss shit. I didn't want to miss a second of that movie, bro. Really, really awesome movie. I encourage everybody, if you haven't seen it, go see it. It might be the best movie. Probably, I don't see any movie topping this, this movie this year. Um, it's just gonna be the best, one of the best fucking movies of all time, bro. That's just, that's just what it is. So go see it, man. I'll give the Batman a nine, a good 9.3, a 9.3. I'll give the Dark Knight like a, a nine. I'll give a, the Dark Knight a 9.3 too. Double nine threes on a bitch. Phenomenal movies. I, I don't really remember. I don't re really remember movies that, that got me this excited to talk about it and let my listeners know, go see it. But there it is, bro. The, the Batman, go go get your tickets, go get your popcorn, your sodas. It's gonna be it's gonna be three hours, bro. So you you gotta just watch out for that. You know what I mean? You don't you don't wanna be pissing yourself. Like me, it would have been torturous if I was holding my piss for a fucking whack movie. I was holding my piss like oh, pretty much throughout the whole movie, but I couldn't miss it, bro. That's how fucking dope it was. So go see it. I wanna see any given Sunday to URL. I want to see. Okay, so we have Av versus Danny Myers. This is going to be a dope battle. We have a super duper puncher, Av versus Danny Myers. Danny Myers, 
He could do, he could do, he could scheme, he could fucking, he could bar you out, he could punch. Av is going to have a real problem with Danny Myers, bro. If Danny Myers doesn't come to play, he's going to fucking punch Av's head off. He's going to have all kinds of Av flips, and Av's going to have a bunch of Myers flips. I'm going to say right now, I haven't seen the rest, of who, who's going to be on the rest of the card, but Av versus Danny Myers is going to be the battle of the night. Just on paper, just looking at it, it looks like it's going to be the fucking battle of the night, bro. Av versus Danny Myers? They don't usually do this, bro, where they give you, they, they give you, like, fresh battles. Like, this seems like a battle that should have happened years ago, bro, but I don't understand. Like, I, okay, well, fuck all that shit, bro. Av versus Danny Myers. I can't wait to see this one. This is going to be some dope shit. We got Charlie Clips versus Lou Castro. I'm not a big fan of Clips, bro. I don't know what it is. Charlie Clips is too basic. He's like a fucking, like, real generic. Like, he started that generic battle rap shit. Like, I don't know. To me, I don't think, I don't see what's the big deal with Clips. So I got Lou Castro. Oh, Av versus Danny Myers. I'll give uh, Danny 2-1 uh, Av. That's that's my prediction. Charlie Clips versus Lou Castro. I'm rooting for Lou Castro, man. I'm not going to lie. Lou Castro, you better get this 2-1, bro. I'm not expecting much out of this battle, so that's just where we are. I don't want to play the videos, the videos and shit, but I really honestly should have been prepared. Who else is on the card, bro? The URL, they really need to put out all, like, who's going to battle, like, on the fucking event. Show, like, who the fuck is going to battle on it. I don't understand this shit. Oh, we got Cortez and Sue Surf. Obviously, duh. I should have kind of did this before in the beginning. Yeah, I got Cortez 3-0 against Surf. I don't like Surf. I really hate that Surf is just a shit-talking clown-ass nigga on his clown nigga shit. Uh, Sue Surf can't fuck around and body Cortez, but that's only if Cortez isn't ready. But I've heard through the grapevine, through the apple vine, and the fucking pear vine that Cortez has been ready spaghetti for years for this. So I'm expecting Cortez to 30 Surf. Cortez got years of dirt, years of, of energy for this battle. So Cortez, you better 30 Surf for me. Come on, man. Gotta represent the Rasa out here, man, and give me that 30, baby. That 30, baby. Calico versus Chess. Woo! Woo! This is, this is a fucking battle that's gonna be classic too, bruh. We got three of them, bro. We got Adverse Danny, dope battle. We're gonna, we're gonna get Sue Surf versus Cortez. It's gonna be a dope battle. And we got Cal versus Chess. Cake Life. Fucking landslide. Kalishnikov, Calico versus fucking Chessboard. Honestly... I don't know, man. Cal, Cal can surprise you, bro. I really think the the Geechee versus Cal was a good battle. I only seen it live, so I, I really wish I had the URL app to see some of these battles that I like. But on paper, this is going to be some shit, bro. Chess. This is the thing. Like, it's heads or tails with me for both of them. Like, this could either be a really good battle, like a really good battle, or it could be like, eh. Uh, come on now, Cal versus Chess on, on, on paper, this is going to be a dope battle, so I'm expecting a lot. I'm expecting a lot from this battle. I don't know how to call it, man. It could be debatable. It could be 2-2, uh, man. That's how I'm calling it, 2-2 for now, because I don't know the whole... I don't know the whole rundown of, of this shit. Yeah, because I'm not really a big fan of Cal or Chess, like, like super duper, you know what I mean? It's kind of like, like, whatever, you know? Oh, Charlie Clips battled Lou Castro already on Resolution. What the fuck? Okay, so I got to go watch. Didn't I watch that live? This is, uh, they did this during a Johto tour, so I don't know if I caught it or not. I might have did, I might have not. They're only doing three battles? Is this event only three battles? Fucking name, bro. This is why they need to tell you how many... Oh, my God. Fucking URL is fucking lame when it comes to promoting exactly what, what's going down. Because it just fucked the whole momentum up of the podcast. But it doesn't matter. And that was, that was my Any Given Sunday 2 predictions. Everybody just needs to chill the fuck out for a second and realize a few things. Get their life in order. Drink some fucking vitamins. 
pop some fucking cherries or whatever the fuck it is. Because y'all got to be razor sharp. And if you're not razor sharp, man, you're going to get cut by anything, man. This is the God's Hour. Max, Max was the turn out of my lifestyle. Smoking green, blowing white clouds to build the blue skies. Conversating with the gods by my wildflower huh? to let them know that it's the gods I would. This love's the never ending saga. Gods by my wildflower huh? to let them know that it's the gods I would. This love's the never ending saga. Gods by my wildflower huh? to let them know that it's the gods I would. This love's the never ending saga. Gods by my wildflower huh? to let them know that it's the gods I would. This love's the never ending saga. Walk through the sands of times like Gara on the other side. Side of that gat is karma, you wet prada, the devil like inside your box now while the angels fly over my headstone.